Alright, what's up guys? Simon from BrainyBest.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at a different kind of rotary encoder than the one we've used in the past, the KY-040. Very popular, very cheap, but it does bounce a lot, so it needs a lot of code inside the Arduino to make it reliable. I've done a tutorial on that, you can check that here. So the one we're going to look at today is made by a company called Borns. It's the AEW Absolute Encoder, and we're going to see why that one is very reliable and it's always right. So let's go check out the code, test it out, and then we'll be right back. All right, so let's have a quick look at the uh, code we're going to use today. I'm including two libraries at the beginning, the uh, li Liquid Crystal I2C, uh, because I'm using an LCD backpack to connect uh, to the LCD. That way I only need two pins. I've done videos on that. You can check it out here. And of course, the Excel stepper um, is used to control the stepper motor. I've done many tutorials using this one, so you can check my YouTube channel for more information on this. Uh, then the, um, the address of the I2C uh, LCD backpack, most of them come with an address uh, of default of 27, uh, but check yours if it's a different kind, might be a different address. Here are the LCD pins, which pin of the LCD is connected to which pin on the I2C uh, backpack. If you're using a regular HD 44780 LCD, which is most of them, that's the controller on board, then these pins should be correct. But if it's a different LCD, you might have to play around with these. And then we create an instance of the LCD library called I2C underscore LCD. All right, so after that, we have the step and direction pin for the Easy Driver. Uh, the Easy Driver board that's going to be controlling the stepper motor. Uh, we're initializing the stepper library with those values. And then we get into the encoder itself. So it has its own library, as you can see here. And before we go any further, we're going to cut here. We're going to see quickly how these types of encoder work, and then we'll be right back. All right, so this is going to be a quick overview of how this encoder works. The one we're using today is the Borns EAW Absolute Encoder. Now, this encoder features 128 different positions per rotation. It has eight pins that we can connect to. And when you rotate the shaft, each one of those pins will either be a zero or a one, creating a binary number. Now, this encoder has a lookup table that we can uh, check. And when we find that uh, binary number, it will give us the actual position of the encoder. Now, each position creates a different number. So that way uh, it's very precise. So there you go. That's a quick overview of how it works. So let's go back to the code and continue. We know a little bit about the encoder, let's continue to code. So we're including the mapping. Uh, this file actually contains the table of all the results in binary that we can refer to when we read the pins on the encoder. And then we're initializing the library, uh, saying that pin 2 of the UNO is connected to pin 1 of the encoder, and so on and so on. As you can see here, we're including the encoder map. Uh, then we have a multi-turn encoder value. This uh, variable will hold the value from minus 32,768 to 32,767. Uh, when we turn the shaft, this value will be entered in here, and we'll use that today to rotate the uh, stepper motor. Now we get to the main setup, so we're starting the LCD. I'm using a 16 by 2 line, 16 character by 2 line LCD. If yours is bigger or smaller, you can change it here. Setting the backlight to on, clearing the LCD at the beginning, and then we're setting the current position of the stepper to zero, max speed, acceleration, and speed of the stepper motor right here in the setup, and we're starting the encoder library. And we get to the main loop. So the multi-turn encoder value will be equal to the library M position, which is a multi-turn value from the encoder. So we'll get that from the encoder. The, and then we set the move to the of the stepper to that value right here. Now here, while the stepper distance to go is not equal to zero, meaning it hasn't reached this yet, we're running the stepper to that new position. So this uh, will block until the stepper gets to the position that it read in the multi-turn encoder value here. And then we just display the information on the LCD. So we display the encoder value and we display the stepper current position value. So you'll see that when we do the testing. Uh, so there you go, guys. That's the whole code we're going to use. So I'm going to upload that right now and let's go test it out. All right, so everything is ready to go. I'm providing power to the Easy Driver already. We've got an encoder here, the LCD, our stepper motor, and the Uno. So let me plug in the Uno and see what happens. All right, so at the beginning, the encoder is at zero, stepper is at zero, as you can see on the LCD. So I'm going to rotate the 
little encoder here and as you can see the stepper is moving accordingly and I can even move one step back and forth very precisely as you can see and I can go very fast one way or very fast the other way now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to point this little arrow on the stepper here up like this and I'm gonna reset and here you can see we're at zero so I'm gonna start rotating the shaft very fast back and forth try to confuse it and there we go so we're gonna go back to zero now on the encoder so I'm looking at the LCD going back to zero up oh, too far and there we go and it's still pointing in the same direction so these guys are very precise because no matter where they are there's 128 possible positions and if I put it here it's always going to be at that value and so on so there you go guys hopefully you can find a project or a future project where you might use one of these uh, I really like this one because this one is cheap uh, these types of encoder most of the time run between 40 50 dollars each uh, this one is like seven bucks or ten bucks Canadian and of course it's a mechanical one so it has a limited life uh, i think it's a hundred thousand rotation but still very good for the price so that'll do it so let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up all right so there you go guys that'll do it for today uh, remember to check out the website if you want more information i have the connection diagrams the uh, library that uh, you need to use and if you want a copy of the code you can get it all there also if you like my videos please subscribe share like all that cool stuff and uh, until next time, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.